Guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. I am not alone. I am joined by your and my favorite co-host, Jax. What's up, Jax? How you doing, man? I'm doing great, Ash. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, bro. Today we're here to talk all about the Mighty Miner, who just got an emergency buff, yeah. uh, you know, Friday, I think. Uh, we're going to talk about the card conceptually in our first match. You know, what archetypes does this card fit in? What do we think of the card overall? Then the second match, we're going to go ahead and just talk about, you know, how is he balanced correctly? You know, how do we how do we feel about him after the balance changes, after the emergency buff, so to speak? And then the third is what needs to happen from here with this card. So, uh, Jax, before we get to any of that... And was it was it a giant bust? Was this card a giant bust in the game overall compared to the other three champions? Uh, so, Jax, first off, how you been, man? How you living? Uh, I've been great. I'm on spring break, so I'm well rested for once. I'm not going to be tired in this. I love that. Just having a good time. Extra pep in your step here, talking money. Oh, Let's yeah. just jump into a 2v2 match. We'll talk about it. All right, here we go, guys. So, Jax, get ready for this, man. I'm playing Mirror Bait Money Miner. <laughs> what are you playing? I'm playing Bridge Spam, and hopefully oh, I'm not going to knock over my... What? I just, <laughs> just I knocked over my double mighty minor. Going both Let's lanes, do it. mighty minor. Imagine they switch lanes straight together. Yeah, right. I'm gonna actually switch my get out of there. Yeah, sure, okay, sure, let's sure. Get out of there. Let's do this. Oh, we oh, pulled the oh, yeah. bandit too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so what do we think? Oh my god, the double mighty minor push. All right, so what do we think? Let's do this and let's do this and see what. Oh, happens. that's rage. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh, ah, man. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, I got him on Watch the tower. This. I got him on the tower. He's going crazy. Oh, that was some nice damage. Okay. Okay, so uh, you got anything for the baby D? No? No. No, we don't. Now nah, whatever. We, so, look oh, at, look the at that right-hand tower. Oh, my gosh, man. Okay, so what do we think of the card so far, man? Conceptually, what do you think of Mighty Miner, man? I absolutely love it. I think this is one of the most conceptually cool cards they've added in a really long time. You, As you were saying, it definitely feels deserving of its champion status. And, like, it, it's just, like, all the different like roles it can fill and you know it's got the switch lanes concept which is something that a lot of people probably heard of like i think they were talking about the portal card it was yeah. an unreleased card yeah and they never added it but then they kind of like incorporated it into this card and the fact that it's got some death damage to like cover its trail too it's just it has so many different things that you can use it for and it adds really creative and outplay-esque gameplay with the card to the game and i'm really happy about that me too, man. I totally agree with you. Uh, I'll fire ball. Ooh, whoa, whoa. That rage caught me off guard. Okay, there we go. We got it. Uh, I totally agree with you, man. I think this card is really, really cool. You know, it almost is di as, as dynamic, excuse me, as the original Miner was. You know, like, he does a lot. Switching lanes, a brand, a brand new mechanic. Dropping the bomb is pretty cool. Uh, what archetypes do you see him fitting in? I'm going to try to sneak this in. Do you see him fitting in the uh, the best? Um, I really see him fitting into archetypes that, like, maybe are a bit defensively weak, but not bad on offense. So, you know, stuff like minor wall breakers, which has, you know, sometimes they have to put, like, Valkyries and stuff. Sometimes they don't have the greatest of tank killers, but they're, like, really sound on offense. And since the Mighty Miner doesn't really apply too much offensive pressure, usually, like, he's just there to defend, kind of. It's really cool to see him in like archetypes like that that aren't really worrying about offense, but need a little bit of like that ground Inferno Dragon type thing to just kill off many tanks and stuff. Yeah, and like despite what we're gonna talk about in a minute, is that like how balanced he is or, or lack thereof? It also is. Uh, it's a card that you always need to respond to and be aware of, right? Like because yeah. it's so damaging, obviously, if you're not so. GG's, man. GG's. I haven't played 2v2 since I played it with you earlier, but man, uh, well done. Oh, man, I'm, I'm cutting your head off here in the, uh, in the, in the video. My bad, dude. My bad about that. No, no I, I accidentally hit my webcam oh. and it knocked it over. So <laughs> oh, you get really into the 2v2 match. Okay. So, yeah. in terms of just the concept of the card, the verdict is in. Jax and I, right, our definitive response is we actually really like the card. It's not a bust at all in terms of the oh, yeah. concept. Now let's talk about the actual power of the card right now. All right, so Jax, we talked about that we love the card. Really cool card. By the way, this is a top 20 ladder uh, replay right now. Uh, one of the players using a Mighty Miner deck at the top, the best. And then the next one, we'll see a different deck, a very cool one mirror uh, Mighty Miner deck. Actually, the one I was just playing in the uh, in the 2v2. Let's start before the balance, before the emergency buff. Like, I'm assuming you thought it was weak. One of the first things that I said when this card was released was I, like, asked Rick on Twitter under his tweet to, like, be ready to emergency nerf the card because it seems like it would be so strong. And then it was released, 
and it just it didn't live up to what a lot of people probably thought it was going to be. A lot of people probably thought this was going to be like a really strong card, absolutely like emergency nerf worthy, and it just didn't turn out to be like that, which yeah, is kind yeah. of surprising. Pre buff. I definitely think it was on the weak side for sure. Okay, so what what about post buff? You know, you don't have to look at your phone, Jax. Oh, I was watching the replay. Okay. Well, it's okay. I mean, you can watch the replay if you want to. Okay, it's, it's all a good. Cool replay to watch. We can we can comment on it, I guess. Uh, but <laughs> what, what do you think of the card after the? Uh, so, th what do you think of it now? I think it is probably about balance. Maybe a little bit under average, uh, like a uh, under average. Yeah, that's the right term, right there. Sure, sure, sure. A bit under average because. It's just the problem comes when it has to deal with multiple targets. And so many decks run like at least one card. Like even this deck, you can see um, the Prince. Actually, he's not running. He's got E-Bar. But most decks are like running Skeletons or Guards or Skarmy or something like that. And if you just save that card for him, he's almost useless on offense. And if he has to do multiple things on defense, he can get overwhelmed really easily. And the ability yeah. just doesn't provide the value you really are expecting normally like he if he's like played into the sort of the middle he doesn't go all the way over to one side like it's dependent upon he's like a symmetrical mm -hmm. ability so when it changes you just like you got if you put something in the middle you can usually counter him is what i'm trying to say yeah and the bomb is like a three second deploy time or something so normally if something's attacking them and you just get it out of the way that card's going to run past the bomb and it's not really going to get that much value so i think those are where it's like its issues lie i agree with you and it doesn't you know like listen when he takes down the tower with the inferno uh, dragon type mm -hmm. charge up like he feels really cool and really good but to get him to actually work even in the archetypes you kind of went over on our on our 2v2 match it feels way easier said than done, doesn't it? Like, yes, just to get the mechanics to work. And that's, I don't know what needs to be changed there. What did you think of the way they emergency buffed him with a one less uh, ability cost? I think that was a great first change. Like, the, I'm not, I, I was a little bit skeptical about them buffing it stats wise, because if they did, it could have ended up being really, really good. But, you know, like, just adding that the what two elixir ability definitely was way too much it was almost very there were so few situations where that was a good play mm -hmm. to spend two elixir on that instead of maybe another two elixir on your push but one elixir that makes it so much more versatile and i think that was a very good change to start it off so it sounds like right now you consider the card to be a what like tear it off uh, like a B tier card, like it, not even don't even hold it to like a special level because it's a champion. So two part question: Number one is, do you think that champions ought to be like very clearly better than legendary cards? A, and B, you know, how do you compare it to other legendary cards and champions right now? I really don't agree with the take of the higher the rarity, the better the card needs to be. I think I that is, I think that is probably coming from bias personally, but also the other side comes from bias from like. Well, if I spend so much time leveling up a legendary, I hope it can just annihilate my opponent's push or something like that. I disagree. I think the card should be more creative the higher rarity they get. So, you know, like the Ewiz has double hand reset ability with a spawn entrance. That's really cool. That's uh, interesting. Archer Queen can go invisibility while increasing. Like, that seems like champion legendary wise. I just don't think they should buff this card to become really good just because it's a champion. I think that can be really unhealthy. And I prefer a balanced game to you know like a really overpowered champion because it's a champion yeah you know what i agree and i disagree right so the part that i agree on is i agree with every normal card they ought to be the same as every like i i, I totally agree and then the teams come out and said this a, f a few times as well to their credit they said that they said that hey listen uh just because it's a legendary means it's more dynamic complex maybe takes some more skill to actually learn and master uh but it doesn't mean the card ought to be better right and i, I like that philosophy uh, however, I think I feel a little bit differently about champions, and I'm curious about wh how my viewers feel. I think that champions, I guess by nature that they have a, se a, a, a secret ability, a secret, <laughs> a special ability, that they already are more complex and definitely fit that bill, but I almost feel like they, they, in my mind, that's where I diverge a little bit. I think champions ought to be a little bit better than your average legendary card, but I'm curious to see what my viewers think. That's just kind of a 
I don't know, a matter of opinion more than anything else, right? Uh, let's talk about what needs to change on this card in the next one. All right, Jack, so my viewers will let us know, I'm sure, how they feel about the Mighty Miner, how they feel about if champions ought to be better than your average card. But let's talk a little bit about the actual, and this is the uh, the cool deck I just played, by the way, at the bottom. Or uh, or it looks like a, yeah, this is the deck, isn't it? Wait, wait I had Fireball, he has Earthquake. Doesn't matter. Either way, Jax, uh, so what do you think right now? You know, wh what do you think about the card? What should they, what should they change now? I don't think this should change anything right now. We are currently in the just beginning of the second week of a new meta with balance changes and a new card. I think it needs a bit of time to settle, especially everywhere while some people can like level up the card or play decks and see which ones he works in. Cause you know, we may end up finding one of the most broken decks of all time in the next week and a half before the end of the season, using the Mighty Miner as like its key card and just be like, please do not touch this card. It's going to be so broken. But I also think that that's probably unlikely to happen. And he's going to end up needing a buff in the next set of changes. And in my opinion, I think the buff that I would like to see is either a small range increase. I think he's melee short right now. Maybe go up to melee medium. Or I think they should make him uh, switch targets a little faster. Because he feels really slow trying to get one skeleton. And he's like, one skeleton. And then like... It just ends up taking so long for him to kill everything. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. And it's weird, too. I agree with you, too. I'm not asking for another emergency uh, buff to the card. I think I don't think they would ever do that anyway, like back-to-back. -back. Yeah. Uh, but clearly, he did need a tune-up. I mean, his win rates were like 33%, 36%, something around there. Oh. Uh, at least what we can tell from API. So you, they have the exact stats, obviously. Uh, but I will say that like what we're seeing right now in this replay, he does have like a really good counter push potential right uh, yeah. uh, after killing tanks right so if you can get that if you can take down a mega knight take down uh whatever uh then that to me is like he's already given his value and then he can be kind of dynamic on the offensive end as well so i like that uh kind of outplay value on the card overall uh i will say though that i think his bomb needs to do a little bit extra damage like it's very underwhelming what you get from that bomb uh, what about you? Well, you? Do you think? Uh, how do you feel about the bomb itself? I feel like the bomb needs a faster blow up time. I honestly okay. think that I, I haven't seen most of the interactions with the bomb, but I do know it like one shots goblins and minions and all that, which is important. I just think it needs to blow up faster because, like, okay. as soon as the mighty miner goes underground, the, the troop, unless there's something behind it, is just immediately like, all right, time to dip. And then it takes so long for it to blow up that most fast paced troops, like, swarms are usually fast. They're out of there. They're gone. The bomb maybe hits like a spear goblin out of a goblin gang or three skeletons off a of skarmy or like a minion off a of minion. Or, like, it just barely seems to get anything. I would like to see maybe a slightly faster blow up time and keep it low damage. So it's not like a giant skeleton. You remember when the giant skeleton, like, a one second blow up time and it would just. Mm -hmm. Everything gets trapped, a rocket hits it, it's like, oh man, this card is so unfun to play against. But like if it's low damage, I think it does I think it can keep the fast blow up time so it can get more value. Final question for you, Jax, here is uh mm -hmm. what do you think this card is supposed to be? Is it supposed to be a win condition? Is it supposed to be a support card? Is it supposed to be a control card? Is it supposed to be like a, a versatile card like the regular miner? I feel like it's supposed to be a combination between the sub like the support card miner type card and like a tank killer, like a mini P.E.K.K.A., you know. Um, it has the Inferno Dragon concept, as I've probably said a billion times, but that's like really unique. And the fact that you can like switch the lanes and kind of just like have a ground tank killer there uh, is just like, I think it. I think that's what its role should be. I don't think it really needs to be a win condition because, you know, trying, if your strategy is to get an Inferno Dragon to the tower, it's very difficult. Yeah. And it can be really annoying if it's actually good enough to be getting to the, or like get it to the tower consistently. Okay, man. Well, hey, I, uh, I pretty much agree with everything you said for the most part. So let's see what my viewers think. My game just crashed. I have no idea why or how, but, uh, either way, the video is over. Uh, guys, go ahead and give Jack some love on social media. His player stats and profiling stats Uh, big shout out to Glitch Energy, new channel partner here, Bren Chong, of course, as well. And go give uh, Jax a subscription on YouTube as well while you're at it guys uh jacks thanks for joining me man appreciate it thank you for having me always a lot of fun all right thank you guys for joining us as well and as always take care guys